Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY sailboat refit video. Last week I moved Athena here to the workshop and that has probably been the best decision I've made in this refit so far. Athena was filled to the brim with materials, just off cuts and stuff I didn't want to haul back and forth. As a result, the forward cabin was basically filled to max capacity with just stuff and the old forward head was also very much not a sight for sore eyes. Yesterday I spent all day hauling stuff out of Athena. A lot of that stuff is now inside of the workshop awaiting final sorting, but a lot of it also went straight to the recycling center. And as a result, the boat is now nice and tidy. Look at all the room in the forward cabin. In the main saloon, there's now tons of room for moving around without tripping over stuff, which is kind of nice. This week, I want to continue working on the galley here and get that all framed out. And it looks like it's going to be warm enough this weekend for me to tab the tabletop here to the hull. So that is what I'm aiming for. The first step is going to be to get the custom built gimbal box for the stove and cooktop back in position. I had to remove that because of the move. This time around, I've used a little block of wood down here to support the gimbal mount. That way I can slide the oven back and forth and find the perfect alignment. This looks just about right and uh, yep, that is perfect. I'll just put a little mark down here and then I know exactly where to place the gimbal mount. And it looks like if I come up just a few millimeters on the forward side, we're going to be spot on. Now I'll use the little mark I made here to line up the gimbal mount and I'll shove my driver's license under there to use as a shim. And now I know exactly where to drill the holes. Of course, it doesn't have to be a European driver's license, but these are metrics, so it helps a little bit. No, I'm just kidding. And for those playing along at home, this is me, age 18. Both of the mounts are now in place, so this should be the final test fit of the box. Yep, yeah, this looks spot on perfect. Next up is to figure out the height of the countertop here in the galley. And I want that to be roughly flush with the top of the stove here. And I'm gonna have 10 millimeters of compact laminate here and underneath that another 12 millimeters of plywood. So I'll have to subtract that from the height of this. After copious amounts of double checking, I've determined that this is where I wanna cut this piece of plywood. And I've taken the slight tilt of Athena as she sits in her cradle into account. The line here on the bottom, that's the top of the old countertop. And as you can see, I've raised the new one just a little bit because I always felt like the old one was just a little bit too low. Now I gotta figure out how far to trim this back to allow enough room for the sink and the faucet. I think the width of the sink plus 10 centimeters should be good. I think we've lost about this much of the old storage in here, but then on the other hand, we've gained a much bigger sink. So yeah, everything is a compromise. I think I've figured out roughly how I wanna frame the galley. So let's go ahead and get started. So far, so good. This is where the little cabinet under the sink is gonna be. And over here is the fridge or the freezer. And so far, I think this looks pretty good. All I need now is one more of these. This is where it's just super convenient to be able to run down my stairs into the workshop and use the bandsaw. I think it's safe to say that we are in overkill territory here. Once the plywood goes on, this is gonna be ridiculously strong. I've just double checked everything and it looks perfect. So I might as well just go ahead and get all of this screwed and glued in place. Just a little dab of epoxy thickened with 406 should do the trick.
And the last piece of the puzzle for tonight. It's the next day and although it takes several days for epoxy to fully cure, this is already plenty strong. This is not just baby size elephant, this is full size elephant proof. My plan is to run this 50 millimeter or two inch conduit here in the bottom of the galley to run cables through. So of course I need to drill some holes down here, but before I can actually run this stuff, I wanna get all of this sealed up. Before I can do that, I need to put the toe kick in place. And I also need to figure out the area underneath and behind the gimbal box. I held the pencil against the corner of the stove and rocked the stove back and forth. So now I know this is the absolute lowest point when the stove gimbals. I did the same thing back here, allowing the gimbal to swing to 25 degrees. The storage underneath the gimbal box is gonna be a little bit tight, but I think it'll still be good for cooling racks and stuff like that. This should give me just about two centimeters or just shy of an inch of clearance underneath the gimbal box. Yep, this is perfect. And this is within one millimeter, so very good. I think the next logical step is to get the toe kick glued and screwed in place and then we can seal up all of the inside edges on the back of that because if water does end up down there, I don't want it to be seeping out on the cabin sole, I want it to drain into the bilge. Once I've sealed everything up, I can run the conduit through there, through there, through there, and then finally through the main bulkhead. This might not look like a lot of conduit, but I firmly believe that that is enough. But uh, yeah, we'll find out in an upcoming video. The very last thing I'm gonna do tonight is just to put down a big generous fillet on the back of the toe kick. Like I said, if we get some water back there, I want that water to drain to the bilge and not out onto the cabin sole. My camera died last night while fiddling about with that fillet, but I think the mission for today is to get the plywood countertop in place and perhaps figure out the area behind the gimbal box. Here's the fillet. It is still a little bit sticky, so uh, let's just leave that alone for now. I think I might have celebrated this milestone before in error, but this should be the very last piece of the old main saloon. I need a piece of plywood that is 85 by 120 centimeters. That should just barely fit through the companionway hatch. Yep, this just barely fits through. I've cut this a little bit bigger than I need just to give myself some wiggle room. I will have to remove some of the plywood here to be able to fit the knee, but it doesn't matter if this is super precise or not. So far, this looks like a pretty decent fit. All I have to do now is just to remove a little bit more of the plywood here so that it can slide all the way in. After a little bit of fiddling about, I've arrived at something that is usable. All that's left to do now is just to trim off the excess plywood. Yep, I am sure plenty of delicious dinners are gonna get cooked right here. Like I mentioned earlier, there's gonna be a piece of compact laminate like this stuff right here on top of the plywood. The plywood is there for strength and also to help support the sink. The sink is gonna get undermounted to this compact laminate and then the flange on the sink here is gonna get supported by the plywood. 
After a little bit of fiddling about, I've lined up the sink. <laughs> I had a feeling that was going to happen. It, the sink has these uh, attachment points here on the side and uh, I didn't want to remove too much material. So yeah, I need to take off just a little bit more for these to fit. I've cut out little notches here for those attachment points and now the sink fits. There's of course gonna be storage here out towards the hull, but I don't wanna build that this weekend because I wanna get the plywood here tabbed to the hull first. And that means all that's left to deal with here in the galley is the super fiddly bit. By that, I mean the area here behind the gimbal box. I think that is gonna be very fiddly to figure out. Right now, the gimbal box has this cool feature where it can also be used for cooking in Australia, but I don't wanna leave the hull behind it exposed and I wanna put up a little bit of insulation in there too. The goal is to have the box still be able to gimbal to roughly 25 degrees with the insulation and the plywood in place. Just to help visualize it, this right here is roughly 25 degrees. To help me figure this out, I've just temporarily secured the box at 25 degrees. Now I can mark the angle of the stove back here. I don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera, but down here I've got the arch of the lowest point of the stove, and then this straight line is the back at 25 degrees. I've got the same thing marked over on this side. Now I just gotta make sure whatever I build back here doesn't interfere with those lines. I shouldn't need it, but I'm just gonna add a line where the box sits when it's perfectly flat outside or when the box is locked in place. The reason this is a little bit of a fiddly process is because there's a lot of angles and also because of the tabbing in here. So it's not flat surfaces. They're all just a little curved. Something like this is what I'm going for. Only with this piece back here trimmed so that it sits at the same level as the countertop. Time for a quick little sanity check here and uh, yeah, I think this looks pretty good. I used the box to line up this back piece here so that I know it's absolutely parallel to the back of the box. So let's go ahead and put some supports in for this. Now all I should need to do is just to trim the front of this top piece here and then that will be done. I've got a little digital angle measuring doohickey somewhere but I can't find it so as a substitute I have bolted together two stir sticks. I used the stir sticks to set the angle of cut on the table saw and surprisingly enough it actually seemed to have worked out very well. This looks spot on. As expected, this is turning out to be very fiddly. Ah, oh, that is it. This is done. At least that's almost true, because for this to be truly done, I have to seal up the plywood behind all of this and then I can put up insulation and then I can do the final installation of all of this. But at least I've got all the pieces cut and the supports are screwed and glued in place. It is Sunday morning and I think we're starting a new tradition here aboard Athena because apparently Sunday is storm day. Yep, we've got another storm rolling through. This one is not as bad as the storm last weekend, but it still led to some annoying situations. One of them is down here under the galley where some water has seeped in. This is exactly why I want to put a little drain here so that any water that pulls up down here can run into the bilge instead of just pooling here. I'm sure you're wondering, but where the heck is that water coming from? And uh, well, it's coming from this uh, blue nitrile glove that's stuffed into a hole in the hull. 
Before moving Athena to the workshop, I removed the attachment points for her boat legs on the outside of the hull, because that means the hull is less than 4 meters wide, which means it's cheaper to move. We won't need these boat legs in the future, so I was planning on removing them anyways. And I simply just haven't gotten around to patching that hole this week, which is kind of stupid because now I've got a bunch of water to deal with. The plywood down here will dry out, so this is not a big issue, but it does mean I can't glass the plywood countertop to the hull today. So yeah, that's gonna have to wait a few days. Slightly more annoying is this giant leak over here underneath the companionway. This seems to be a little bit of a design flaw with the Warrior 38, or at least with Athena, where if the bow sits just a little bit at an upwards angle, well then water pools up here and it overflows into the boat rather than flowing out over the cabin top. I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera, but there's a little drop right here. And the same goes for over here on the starboard side. Actually, part of the issue here might also be the ginormous gap that's up here. You can clearly see out. And given the wind speeds, it is kind of raining sideways right now. But last weekend when we had that other storm rolling through and we got a lot of water quick, I did see it overflow, so it might be a combination of the two. Either way, when the fiberglass dodger goes back on the boat, that should solve the issue. But yeah, for now I've got a bit of water to clean up. And again, this is not the end of the world. This plywood will dry out and it'll be good as new. In a desperate attempt to do something, I have shoved a plastic bag up here. I'm hoping that'll take care of the sidewards rain. But because of the high winds, I can't really put a tarp or anything over the boat right now. So yeah, this is all I can do. I've turned on my little dehumidifier and put up a couple of buckets also. So yeah, let's uh, call this good enough for now and abandon ship. Let's finish this video in here in the uh, nice dry workshop. There are a couple of things I'd like to show you. As most of you know, the plan is to use this Itty Bitty Perkins 402 as a generator. And I finally settled on what alternator to strap onto this little guy. I don't have the alternator here at the workshop yet, but it's this model here. It looks roughly something like this guy up here. More specifically, it's the 9.5 kVA version of this. This is a brushed alternator with AVR, so the regulation should be a little bit better than just a capacitor. And because I'm not an expert, I sent an email to the manufacturer and they actually replied, which was pretty dang cool. And they recommended the ES20FS160 based on the Itty Bitty Perkins. The alternator should show up in a couple of weeks. Now the last thing I want to show you is this pile of laser cut steel right here. It's conveniently located right here next to the reflex stove, which was the original plan for heating Athena. And that's because this is the new plan for heating Athena. Once put together, this is how we'll get both heat and through a heat exchanger, hot water. All we need to be able to start putting together the boilers are a few pipes and they should show up this coming week. Now I've shown you guys the pile here before and I'm only mentioning it again because over the last couple of weeks I've gotten some suggestions for various heating systems and thank you for those suggestions but the plan is still to go with the DIY version. As far as the reasons for ditching the reflex stove and going with the DIY version and also for not using a forced air heater, well all of that we'll get back to in the video where I start assembling the boiler. In next week's video I think I might build the fridge that's going to go underneath the galley because now that I haven't glassed the plywood countertop to the hull, it would be kind of nice to get the fridge in there before doing that. But uh, yeah, it's definitely an option for next week. But that is going to be the end of this video. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.